Hello and thank you so much for making time to be on Climate Check. I'm your host, Mary Mwekisa. Now today we're discussing all things climate finance. We know that mitigation, adaptation, and any aspect of ensuring that we take care of our environment requires finance. And that is what we will be focusing on on the program today. And of course, we have another issue that we'll be focusing on, which is an, an initiative that was launched recently by government right here in Lusaka. But for now, we'll take a short break. Now imagine if trees could provide Wi-Fi, just how many trees you would plant? Well, they provide oxygen. We definitely cannot do without it. Destruction of nature, such as forests, has led to irreversible climatic changes to our world. Join me as I talk to policy formulators, change makers, and climate change interest groups on Climate Check weekly on this channel. Now you are the solution to climate change. Welcome back to Climate Check. Now, on to the main issue on the program today. Biodiversity Finance Initiative, Biofin, is a global partnership designed to address the biodiversity finance gap. It was launched by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to help countries develop comprehensive national finance plans to protect and sustainably manage their biodiversity. It supports countries in identifying and mobilizing the resources needed to achieve their biodiversity targets. And uh, this is what we're focusing on, the works of Biofin, Biofin in Africa and in Zambia in particular. And we know that Zambia is dealing with a drought that has been induced by the El Nino effect. And so we'd like to know how some of these sectors affected by the drought are being addressed or looked into by Biofin. And I have with me in studio Mr. Bruno Mwemba, who is a senior technical advisor on environmental finance for African region, Biodiversity Finance Initiative Biofin. Thank you so much, Bruno, for making it to the program. Pleasure is mine. All right. Now, the last time I spoke with you was at your farm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where you are growing, you are practicing climate smart agriculture. I saw uh, for the first time drip irrigation in real time mm -hmm. uh, and solar powered farm. And now, as a country, we're experiencing a drought, yeah. and government is talking about mechanization, off grid uh, solutions. Well, I mean, being an environmental finance expert, um, I, I always love to walk the talk. Um, so, for me, when we were hit by probably another west kind of you know um drought mm -hmm. um way back in about 2015 yes uh 2016 for me that was a wake-up call that um uh, i needed to redesign my you know farming enterprise in a manner mm -hmm. that would be resilient just in case yes. this thing you know reoccurs and um so as far back then i decided to go off grid with my farming uh enterprise and um Almost 10 years now, we've really been off-grid and uh, we have no intention of really going to the grid mm. uh, because we, we've kind of survived. Mm. Um, so we've, we've managed to basically create this level of resilience. So it was a worthy investment at the time because of course. The, the drought has affected the farmers mostly. Yes, I mean, uh, the, the cost also of irrigation, the, the inconvenience, um, mm. given that if power comes in the night yeah. with security issues, mm. sometimes it becomes very challenging for you to really um, you know, irrigate. And so... The, the thesis for, you know, yeah. uh, us having gone for, you know, an off-grid, you know, solution and then bringing in other uh, climate resilience, you know, technologies um, as a small farming enterprise, now it's actually uh, paying off. It's paying yeah, off. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of doubts along the way, but. And government is now focusing on mechanization for smallholder farmers, mm -hmm. even those that can't afford irrigation. Government is trying to see how it can come in and give them basic irrigation uh, solutions, especially that most of them are into maize production. Uh, do you see this as sustainable? It is, um, provided obviously we get the right technologies because I can indicate that there's quite a lot of junk, unfortunately, on the market. Um, so we really need to make sure that we do our due diligence and make sure that we bring on board uh, service providers that have tried and tested technologies. Yeah. Um, and again, nothing utopian, make sure that we actually pick up um, technologies that are low hanging, applicable mm -hmm. to a common man. Okay. Now let's talk about why you're here this um, uh, this evening. We're talking about uh, Biofin and the work that you're doing in Africa and in Zambia around climate finance. First of all, let's understand your role at Biofin. Well, my, my role at the Biodiversity Finance Initiative is, is basically to help um, a number of you know, countries that are parties to the convention on biological diversity uh, towards uh, financing their national biodiversity strategies and action you know, plans. 
Um, so I must actually indicate that um, uh, climate you know, change is just one component mm -hmm. of the Rio conventions. Uh, yes. But then we have also another convention that's called the Convention on Biological Diversity. Mm -hmm. And then we have one also called the UNCCD. So we've got like th three of them. Okay. So for us, our focus is much more on the Convention on Biological Diversity, mm -hmm. where um, it's envisaged that we have a deficit of about $711 billion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dollars. Uh, to get to 2030 in terms of um, you know attaining mm -hmm. uh, the 23 targets that are there in the global biodiversity you know uh, framework. Mm -hmm. By the way, the global biodiversity framework is what we call the equivalent of the you know Paris Agreement when you mm -hmm. talk about climate change. Yes. Um, and and so this is what we basically are trying to do. Um, most of the countries are saying they've got financing gap. Uh, to meet the national biodiversity strategies and action plans, mm -hmm. uh, and we're here to curate, you know, financing mechanisms. And uh, what I do in most of these countries, especially the Anglophone countries uh, in Africa that I oversee, uh, is to help them curate these, you know, financing mechanisms of, of different sorts: mm -hmm. uh, green bonds, you know, payment for ecosystem services, mm -hmm. uh, conservation trust funds, name it. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about um, the different um, initiatives that um, different countries are into in regards to um, the Biofin uh, project. So uh, there's, there's, there's quite an array of different financing mechanisms and solutions. And if you go to our global you know, website, you actually see that we've got um, an expose of about 150 different financing mechanisms um, and solutions that are being curated by uh, over now 132 uh, countries in the world. Okay. Uh, we initially were running with about uh, 41, mm -hmm. and now we've just onboarded an additional 91 uh, countries through the support of the Global Environmental Facility, Jeff. Okay. Um, so which is quite great. And so uh, just to give you a flavor, um, and of course, maybe for Zambia, we'll get into the specifics, mm -hmm. but uh, for Zambia, uh, we've been helping basically to also, you know, come up with a green bond market, you know, development. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are now, you know, doing um, a taxonomy, green finance taxonomy for Zambia, and also supporting the creation of the national green finance um, you know, strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the few other things that we're doing, like the nature-related, you know, uh, studies. Uh, for South Africa, uh, we have an investment portal that we've actually created for biodiversity, um, you know, for private sector to actually invest in mm -hmm. biodiversity assets. Um, in Botswana, we were also working on um, improving the uh, fees, the entry fees for protected areas. Mm -hmm. Because one of the issues that you actually realize um, now is that uh, you, you don't always have to look outward, you also have to look inward. Mm -hmm. And so what actually happened, like for Botswana, the protected area fees um, had been stagnated, you know, for almost 10 years. Okay. And we actually revised those, you know, 100%. And, you know, that has led to an increase mm -hmm. in the resources. So now we are working on ring fencing those revenues and basically channeling them to, um, you know, protected, you know, areas. Okay. Rwanda, exciting stuff that we are actually working on with the Rwanda Green, you know, fund okay. uh, for NERWA, okay. uh, where we basically rooted the, the fees and fines uh, to a fund that we are creating. Yes. Uh, because again, these days, even if you're doing, um, you know, raising money, um, you can't start from zero, sending mm -hmm. what I would call the begging of course, ball of course. from zero. Uh, so we're actually raising domestic revenue from Rwanda by rerouting mm -hmm. the existing fees and fines into a facility, which then we can actually use now to raise, um, you know, uh, the funding. And then we also have, you know, fintech solutions like in Philippines, mm -hmm. GCash, an exciting uh, solution where, you know, it's a fintech solution that we're actually using to, you know, plant, you know, trees. Uh, Malawi, we are supporting carbon, you know, trading, uh, payment for ecosystem services. So there's quite a huge array of the different financing mechanisms that um, um, we we helping. Okay, now uh, wh whatever there's uh, financing involved, one critical issue comes up. Are you able to measure? Are you able to see that where this finance has gone, we're seeing results? Yes, that's that's a very critical. You've mobilized one. the resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've helped the country mobilize resources. Are you are you able to monitor what's happening on the ground? Yes, um, our modus operandi. In, you know, all the countries is that we're looking for about four different kinds of results. Um, one, obviously, is institutional results, making sure that there's capacity building mm -hmm. in the institutions that we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, the second is making sure that, um, you know, we, we see the impact, you know, of, of the financing on biodiversity, yes. um, other than obviously just raising the, the revenues, regulatory, you know, changes. So we have a mechanism on how we track and uh, you will actually note that uh, we we have been very you know monumental 
uh, in the recent you know uh, issues of uh, you know CEC, mm -hmm. uh, the green bond. Mm -hmm. uh, given that we obviously set up the framework you know for uh, green bond market development in Zambia, mm -hmm. and uh, just recently we worked along the copper belt um, with some of your colleagues from ZNBC yes, yes. Uh, to see exactly where those funds have been you know deployed. So we are actually able to track that mm -hmm. and i think in the case of zambia you can actually see exactly what that has done given that now we're in this conundrum around you know uh, the impact of you know climate change mm -hmm. on our power uh, utilities mm -hmm. uh, so in a number of countries i think we have a mechanism on how we really track uh, but I know that it's, 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 it's quite a big one uh, in most of the countries. Sometimes it's a bit opaque to really see mm. what the impact of the different financing mechanisms really mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Let's zero in, um, in, into Zambia. Given your, your, your extensive experience um, as a Biofuel National Coordinator for seven years prior to your current role, can you highlight some of the key activities um, that Biofuel has been engaged in in Zambia? Thank you. Uh, my, my seven years as national coordinator for the biodiversity finance initiatives under UNDP um, were very exciting, given that um, I think when I was recruited way back uh, around 2015, 2016, the issue around green finance was not something that was talked about mm -hmm. in corporate, even government, mm -hmm. um, financial sector. Um, and, and so one of the monumental issues was really uh, to have this conversation mainstreamed into the you know, financial sector, private sector, and, and also, you know, public sector. Mm -hmm. uh, because awareness is a very critical, you know, aspect mm -hmm. for people to really know, because you can't bring change for people that are actually not aware about what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, and so one of the instruments that we identified back then was the issue of green bonds as a potential, you know, solution. And I must actually indicate at the time uh, when we started, we actually wanted to look at pushing the agenda of uh, sovereign issuance. For the government mm. to actually issue a sovereign, you know, green bond, okay. but then you know the debt mm. issues, you know, mm. came in the way, yes. and then we actually had to shift our attention to look at how do we then catalyze the private sector, um, and then we started actually working on on that. Mm -hmm. um, we realized we actually didn't have green bond, you know, guidelines, mm -hmm. um, and we worked on that within one year uh, with our stakeholders, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, and then obviously we onboarded other you know, players like the central bank mm -hmm. um, and, and other regulators of the financial sector like pensions and insurance, WWF. Um, so other than that, you actually realize that when you're actually doing a green you know, bond, mm -hmm. there's two big players. Okay. There's the issuer mm -hmm. of the bond mm -hmm. and of course there's the investor who brings in the money. I was about to ask how do green bonds work? Oh, <laughs> well, so they, they, they work like any other bond, except ah. the deployment of the proceeds, which is the money that you raise, mm -hmm. um, has some rules. It actually has to go in what is defined as a green, green project. project. Ah. So there's, there's mechanisms, um, you know, where we actually vet what really is, is, green. is green, and it undergoes what is called a second party opinion, um, which is an audit um, of your green bond framework to yes. basically check that this is indeed green mm -hmm. and there's mechanisms for also onward you know um tracking mm -hmm. that uh, you are actually continuously you know deploying your proceeds into mm -hmm. a green asset to avoid what is called greenwashing mm. so we, we did that um and like i was saying that these two parties um mm -hmm. so what we did you know for the investors because i mean they can as well take this money elsewhere yes um but we needed to actually create a carrot for them um, you actually note that in Zambia, if you actually invest in a green bond or any other bond, rather, a plant vanilla bond as we call it, mm -hmm. um, your interest you know, undergoes or met it with a 15% withholding tax. Ah. So what we did to create a carrot was actually to discuss with Minister of Finance so to the, zero rate ah, the okay. withholding tax, okay. which then becomes you know, a, a carrot for, for the investors. And yes. then for the issuers, um, we are working now with Minister of Finance, hopefully in this budget cycle, to make sure that the insurance you know, costs mm -hmm. uh, become tax deductible so that it reduces the overall incidence of tax on the part um, of the issuer. So that beyond CEC, we can actually see more mm -hmm. um, other private sector you know, uh, entities really coming to the market. And I must actually indicate we have the resources to actually help any other private you know, companies in Zambia that would want to go to market. Okay. Yeah. And, and then uh, Biofin has been instrumental in creating Zambia's green financing mainstreaming uh, working group. Can you elaborate more on this initiative and its significance? Thank you. Um, the green finance mainstreaming working group is basically a consortium that originally started with you know, Biofin, the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, the Bank of Zambia, 
and then the Pensions and Insurance Authority, and then you also have the, the exchange, Luce. Mm -hmm. um, but additional members have actually been onboarded, of course, the Minister of Finance, Minister yes. of Green Economy, Minister of Lands, um, and we also have WWF, and recently we also onboarded the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants. Okay. Um, the significance of this, um, you will note that when there are all these initiatives that are coming in in a country, there's kind of fragmented approach to deployment mm -hmm. um, and adoption of some of these international um, you know, aspects. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to, uh, is to create this you know, clearing house so that there's go congruence across all the um, financial sector regulators and other key you know, players okay. um, as far as green finance mainstreaming and adoption in Zambia really um, is. And that, I must actually indicate, has been magic, okay. uh, given that this is actually a, a working uh, mechanism. And as Biofin, we are actually supporting the, the secretariat that's being housed at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. And we also have staff that you know, are full-time uh, paid by Biofin as part of the secretariat. And I must actually indicate upfront that Zambia's financial sector regulators have actually been very upfront. Okay. And kudos to them, uh, given that I have you know, this IBED view of different other countries, I might yes. like to indicate that uh, they're extremely very better. proactive. Mm -hmm. And um, based on the results that we've actually, you know, uh, seen for Zambia, mm -hmm. we've now created a similar, you know, uh, mechanism in Botswana. Mm -hmm. uh, and last week I was in Namibia. We we're also already looking at creating something like that, South Africa and many other countries that I oversee. Okay. And, and also we know that Zambia is currently dealing with a drought, which was declared a disaster and a national emergency by President Haka in the Hichilema, yes. which means that our energy sector is affected, food insecurity, and biodiversity is affected of because course. look at how much charcoal yes. has come on, on, yes. onto the market. I mean, and, even the animals themselves, and, and, the yes, water. And animals and, yeah. and water. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, government was talking about sinking boreholes in the national parks and mm -hmm. trying to create little dams for wildlife and so on and so forth. Is Biofin in Zambia doing anything around this issue? Well, what Biofin does is that we don't have project finance that builds bridges and roads, mm -hmm. but we finance the curation of mechanisms yes so one of the potential you know mechanisms that we can actually look at is probably creating like a fund yes um and this is something that we've actually been conceptualizing yes. um unfortunately i think we have a situation now where every sector whether it's the water sector the wildlife sector each one of these ministries if you like or sectors uh, created different funding mechanisms which are called ctfs conservation okay. trust funds okay um you know, there's also the EPF, Environmental Protection Fund, and many other. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have like so many so funds many for each, but most of these have actually remained like paper funds. And we, this is where you come in as well. Of course. So one of the things that we're actually trying to see is, is whether we can actually consolidate and create a mm -hmm. national fund, mm -hmm. uh, like what we've done in, in, in Rwanda, okay. so that we avoid these fragmented you know, issues. But I know um, legally, from a regulated perspective, it's quite a tall order, mm -hmm. but that's something that we're working on, conceptualizing how this can be created. Because I know right now there's, there's quite some huge momentum around creating um, a fund for climate yes. change, yes. Uh, you know, being championed by the Minister of Green Economy. Mm -hmm. But our view as Biofin is that we probably need to create one consolidated fund that deals with all the environmental issues, mm -hmm. be it climate change, be it biodiversity mm -hmm. conservation, be it land degradation mm -hmm. under the UNCCD. Okay. That way, then you have a very good coordinated mechanism uh, that's consolidated and then you find ways of raising domestic revenues um, and then um, get out to market and, and look for additional resources. We've come to the end of this week's edition of Climate Check. Make time next week, same time, same channel, as we discuss yet another issue that has to do with the planet Earth and its protection and preservation. My name is Mary Mwikisa. Thank you so much for joining. Goodbye.